Welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming today. My name is Ricardo Vinuesa, and today we're going to continue with a section on optimal sensor placement. Uh, if you remember in the last class, what we realized is that we had to place something uh, called the condition number, uh, which is going to allow us to get a good signal to noise ratio. And uh, well, basically, this condition number um, is going to be uh, connected with the singular values of our matrix theta. And our matrix theta has two parts. One is the psi r, which is the transformation, is basically POD. The other one is the measurement matrix. So the only thing that we can actually act on is the measurement matrix. And to do that, we're going to use a method called QR pivoting. So that's going to allow us to find the pivots, the measurement locations, so that we can actually uh, make sure that our condition number is low enough so we can get a pretty good signal to noise ratio. So just a quick re recap, the signal to noise ratio, which would be the uh, ratio between, and let me just write this properly. So this is gonna be the ratio between Y, that's my signal, and N, which is my noise. This is proportional to sigma minimum divided by sigma maximum, which is one over kappa and this is um, the inverse of the condition number. So I want to have a very small condition number so that the signal to noise ratio goes high. The only thing I can actually act on, remember that this is the condition number of theta, and theta is gonna be the matrix, which is the product of the measurement matrix and the tailored transformation. Uh, this is given by the data. This is given by the measurement locations. The only thing I can act on is matrix C, um, is basically my, my uh, measurement locations. So we need to properly design C, and we're going to do that with a method called QR pivoting. Okay. And I left you a little bit with a cliffhanger in the previous video. What is this method? What is it actually doing? Well, what we are actually doing is decompose a matrix uh, A into different matrices that can allow us to, uh, through that process, through that matrix decomposition, find the pivots, find the right uh, measurement locations. So keyword pivoting decomposes a matrix R, a matrix Let's call this matrix A, but it's going to live in R, and this R is going to be M times N, Madrid times Norway, into a unitary matrix. And this unitary matrix is going to be called Q. Remember from previous videos, um, a unitary matrix uh, is such that its transpose is basically its inverse, right? that's a property that I can satisfy because um, if we multiply the matrix by its transpose, then we get the, the identity. So uh, we have the first this unitary matrix, an upper triangular matrix R, upper triangular matrix R, and a column permutation matrix C. permutation matrix C. Now, this matrix is called uh, C, not because uh, of a coincidence, not by chance. This is going to be actually our uh, measurement matrix. So I'm going to have the following. I'm going to have my original matrix A multiplied by this column permutation matrix transpose C. So C transpose, that's going to be equal to Q times R. Okay, now this operation, these yields are uh, point sensors. And those point sensors, we're gonna call them pivots, just because remember these pivots, let me write it properly. These pivots, uh, the name comes from this uh, matrix permutation operation that this matrix is actually doing on my original one eh, for this uh, matrix decomposition. So these are pivots. Okay. That best sample, that best sample 
the R basis modes. Psi R. So basically, Psi R times C transpose, that's going to be equal to some uh, key matrix and some R matrix. Okay, so I want to apply um, I want to apply this uh, decomposition uh, with this, basically, with this transformation psi r. So if we consider the case where p is equal to r, so basically the number of sensors, okay, the number of pivots is equal to the modes, the number of modes for reconstruction, In this situation, then uh, we can directly apply this expression and we are pretty much done. Okay, so now this would be the operation that I need to do uh, so that I can um, obtain my pivots, which will be present in this matrix over here. If we consider a case with P is larger than R, so we have more sensors than modes for reconstruction. Okay, so that could also be. So if Let's imagine that now we have a case where well, if P is larger than R, then what we have is Psi R multiplied by Psi R transpose. And this is multiplied now by CT, that's the, the column permutation matrix, equal to Q times R. Okay, So instead of applying it, directly to the transformation matrix, we apply it to this product of the transformation matrix and its um, transpose. So the idea is that uh, if we have more sensors than R, we apply, we apply a QR transformation to uh, this matrix. And here, is where we get uh, the R pivots, which are basically my sensors. Okay. So that's all what it is. I mean, at the end of the day, there's uh, a bit of math because I wanted you to uh, not just apply the method and the formula, go to Python and just get QRP voting done and that's it. I wanted you to see a bit the fundamentals, what's under the hood and why we're actually looking at various uh, matrices, what the different matrices mean, what is the uh, sparse uh, state of the system, what is the uh, low rank approximation of the system and why we end up using this QRP voting. At the end of the day, in a nutshell, we're going to take either the um, transformation matrix, basically the POD, or the transformation matrix times its transpose, again, from the POD. And we're going to be using this QR pivoting on that uh, data, essentially. So how does this implementation take place in practice? Well, this is a note that we have to finish this part of the chapter. So note, one implementation of QR pivoting of QR pivoting. And this is, for instance, in MATLAB, there's many others, eh? but this is just one possible implementation, is through the householder transformation. Transform and basically what we are doing is a reflection about a plane. Okay. So that's pretty much it. This is about optimal sensor placement. Remember, this technique is actually very, uh, it's very simple. This is linear algebra, right? So this is uh, being able to exploit uh, the stuff that we have from matrix decompositions, 
we have the data. With the data matrix, we do the POD. That's going to give me my transformation matrix. From that transformation matrix, I just apply the QR decomposition, QR pivoting, and then I will obtain the pivots. Now, this is about a, a relationship obtained from linear algebra. This works pretty well in a number of cases um, when you have wakes, um, so flows that are uh, with a relative, relatively narrow spectrum um, that can be uh, sensed quite efficiently with few sensors. So this type of QR uh, approach works pretty well. Um, we can explore also more complicated methods. So if you want to do optimal sensor placement in high dimensional broadband turbulent flows, then this linear algebra based methods don't work so well simply because turbulence is high dimensional, it's not linear. So you need to be able to use nonlinearities. There, there are many different approaches. Uh, so something that we are doing research on uh, is what we call, um, well, we have two parts. One, we need to have a reconstruction uh, model. And in that reconstruction model, we just have a, a mask, so an area of possible sensors. Let me just give you a little example so you see what we are doing. And uh, I'll give you some references also in the um, in the comments. Okay, so the main idea is imagine that you have a building and you have the wake behind the building, and I want to sense it. Something that one can do is uh, with the data in the wake. So with this data, you can just uh, collect the snapshots, do POD, and apply QR pivoting, and then uh, you can find the optimal sensor locations. Now, let's imagine that what I actually want to do is uh, find points in this region. So basically on the ground and on the wall of the building to be able to reconstruct uh, the rest, to be able to see what the rest of the flow is doing in real time. And to do that, so basically to reconstruct the rest. And to do that, we need what is uh, called a reconstruction model. So one approach that we have been using, which is not um, not depending on linear algebra, but on deep learning. This is a bit of a more advanced method. One approach that we have been using is uh, based on diffusion models. So basically, the first thing you need is um, a, well, a probabilistic model. Right? So you need to uh, create a model which can create samples. I want to have a probability of the snapshots, basically. That probabilistic model um, you can uh, obtain it with diffusion models. Okay. And these diffusion models, we have talked about them in the in the channel. I'll give you a link to, to the relevant videos. But essentially, they're able to produce instantaneous samples, instantaneous turbulent fields, which are consistent with the physics of the original data. A second step, I need to have a reconstruction. So in this reconstruction, I want to reconstruct the flow field given some measurements Y. Right? And this is uh, something that we can do with uh, DB noise reconstruction models based on diffusion. So again, these diffusion models can uh, reconstruct the flow field by conditioning on the possible regions uh, where I have my, my mask and my possible locations of my input. And finally, what I want to do is what we call optimal sensor placement. The optimal sensor placement one can do by selecting what parts of these uh, input uh, points are most important to reconstruct the flow field. And that's something that we have been implementing with SHAP, with explainable deep learning, which again, based on the videos from the channel, uh, this allows us to identify the most important regions of my input to make a prediction of my output. So to kind of conclude uh, today's video, um, the idea is with QR pivoting, this is based on linear algebra, you're gonna get very good performance in many cases. Uh, when you start to have turbulence and a broadband spectrum, when you start, start to have a broader range of scales, nonlinearities are going to be more important. And then linear algebra models might not perform as well. In that sense, more um, state-of-the-art methods based on diffusion, where you can first create samples, second, make a reconstruction from the mask, from the sparse uh, measurements to the rest of the flow field. And once you have that mapping from the mask to the flow, what you want to do is select what parts of my mask, so what parts of my input are actually the most important. So let me just find what are those regions that are the most important. And that can be done with explainable deep learning. That can be done with SHAP. There's many other feature um, selection methods. This is one possibility. And if you're interested, you can read more about our papers and our research. Um, thanks for coming today and I see you in the next, uh, in the next video. Bye.